This man decided to join the Seventh-day Adventist Church. His name is Pastor Melvin Walso. He was a Baptist minister. It's amazing to hear the reason why he decided to make the change. Let's take a listen to this testimony. And I'm going to share some things with you at the end. Watch this video till the end. Link in the description below. Like and subscribe to the page if you happen to be new. Click the bell icon for more if you enjoy this content. Support the channel as well. Let's have the conversation below. Now tell us about uh, the Seventh-day Adventist Church. How okay. come you, 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 found, you found the light here? All right. Uh, it happens that in 2016, mm -hmm. I've been searching because I feel that there is a vacuum inside. Mm. I told myself, I think I, I taught everything already. So what is lacking? So I do some research. I went to my office and look onto the uh, computer, check on the Wikipedia. And there it happens. I, I search on the orders of the popes. But then there is a publications there, the Catholic Mirror. I give a certain time to read. That was uh, published in 1890s mm -hmm. something. Uh, issued September, 20, uh, September 2 and September 23. Mm -hmm. There I read in that particular uh, issue, and I called it a legal document. They declare that with boldness, they declared, says that they were the one who changes the law. And also, the, they changed the day. All right. So it pokes my heart. And I said, it, it steers me up. I said, what happened? There might be a fraud. I called it a religious fraud. So I read and read until somewhere below. The statement says that you can read from Genesis to Revelation. There is no single verse says that the Sabbath is being changed by Jesus Christ and the apostles and even the early church. Mm -hmm. It's only the Roman Catholic Church by virtue of her mission who changes the day. So that was the beginning of your Not search? Yet. In, the, in the last portion, mm -hmm. this says that all the Protestants who worship on Sunday are squatters. Squatters. They just use our authority and they submit to the authority of the Pope. This is the statement that grieves me. Only the Seventh-day Adventists. Wow, it's very particular. Yeah. Who are faithful to the Bible, but the Protestants who claims that the Bible is their master are at most a disobedient believers. Hmm. So there, it started to revolutionize my spirit and my mind. And so I dig deeper, study and research. It took me months, weeks and months in the office. I did not tell my wife. I did not even tell my co-workers, my teachers. I do a research. Then in the last uh, month of 2016, I decided to come here to go back to Kagen Oro. This is my home place. I, 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 uh, I, was, I grew up here in this place. And I asked the Lord, Lord, can you use me in my hometown? So I engaged myself to go back here. Yes. And then from here, I do some research and fasting. Until finally. And finally, with all convictions, I said, I have to submit to the will of the Lord. Amen. Regardless of my theological background and regardless of the people who is following me, I'm going to follow you. Amen. So I decided to humble myself and ask my humble apology <laughs> to the brethren in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Again, 45 years ago, mm -hmm. I just passed by here in this place. This is Ispom, before. Southern, yeah, before. Southern Philippine Mission. And uh, now I'm here. This was indeed a powerful testimony. 
For as simple as this was, it, it says a number of things. The truth is available for anyone to know and to see and to find out. Even Google tells the truth sometimes. <laughs> okay. Um, and the people who wants to know the truth, they will find it. They will find it. Uh, what I have an issue with is the excuses people make for keeping Sunday, for going along with Sunday worship and rejecting God's Sabbath, the, the excuses. Some try to use the Bible. Some say Jesus resurrected on Sunday. Some say the apostles begin to worship on Sunday. Some say the early church movement changed the day. Weird, uh, the Sabbath was for the Jews, even though Adam and Eve weren't Jewish. But uh, a lot of things they say, it's a lie. It's a deception. It's trickery. Until you study down the road, you find out, oh yeah, the Church of Rome was responsible for the change. But again, it sounds like it's a it's a it's an issue of a day of worship. That looks like it's a small thing. A lot of people like to say that's just a day of worship. What's the big deal? And I answer the question by saying, well, Adam and Eve only ate of a little fruit. So what's the big deal, God? What's the big deal? You see, it shows your loyalty. It shows whom you love. It shows which truth are you willing to follow and subject yourself to. That's what this actually shows. So let me read something to you. One of the quotations that he mentioned here, I'm going to read from the Catholic Church writings themselves. This is Sabbath truth. I'm going to put a link in the description to this website. Check it out. They have a whole lot of substance there to work with. So how about this? Let's take a listen. Let's read a little bit that statement that really uh, it destroys everything. It destroys everything when it comes to the argument for Sunday keeping and Sunday keepers. Have, they have to wrestle with this. And I'm praying for you, for those of you who worship on Sunday and you're still fighting with seven Adventist people. I'm praying for you because you, the Lord has to set you free. You, you, you have to be freed from this deception, but you also have to make up your mind. You have to make up your mind about this. So this is coming from Library of Christian Doctrine. Why don't you keep holy Saturday? Okay, so let's take a listen. Let's read this one. What important question does the papacy ask Protestants? Here is the question. Protestants have repeatedly asked the papacy, how could you dare change God's law? But the question posed to Protestant by the Catholic Church is even more penetrating. And this is what they went on to say. Here it is officially. You will tell me that Saturday was the Jewish Sabbath, but that the Christian church, that the, the Christian Sabbath has been changed to Sunday. Changed? But by whom? Who has the authority? Who has authority to change an express commandment of Almighty God? When God has spoken and said, Thou shalt keep holy the seventh day, who shall dare to say, Nay, thou mayest work and do all manner of worldly business on the seventh day, but thou shalt keep holy the first day of the week? This is a most important question, which I know not how you can answer. You are a Protestant. You profess to go by the Bible and the Bible only. And yet, in so much important a matter as the observance of one day, in seven, as a holy day, you go against the plain letter of the Bible and put another day in the place of the day which the Bible has commanded. The command to keep holy the seventh day is one of the Ten Commandments. You believe that the other nine are still binding. Who gave you the authority to tamper with the fourth? 
if you are consistent with your own principles, you, you, if you really follow the Bible and the Bible only, you are to be able to produce some portion of the New Testament in which this fourth commandment is expressly altered. Listen, I can give you so many more. <laughs> I can give you so many more. And I think these are, these are the things, I'm going to leave a link for this and you need to go read this, this article. There's, there's a lot of quotation from the Catholic Church here and they're very honest. Listen, if you happen to be a Protestant and you're watching this, you, you, you'll be an evangelical or Sunday keeping person. I mean, no way saying you're not a Christian, you're not saved, you don't love the Lord. That's not even, that's not what we're talking about. What I'm saying is that your obedience to God is partial. Your fulfillment to God is partial. Your commitment to God is partial. You're not obeying the entire law. You're obeying only part of it. And I'm in no way saying you're not a Christian because of that. I'm not saying that. I mean, I'm not saying either if you don't obey God, you cannot be saved in a sense of righteousness by works. No, no, no. What I'm saying is that because of your faith and your love for Jesus, you should obey him fully, not just in parts. Um, and take the words of the Catholic Church for what it is. They tell you the truth and they're not lying to you. What they say is what it is. They've changed the day. Not God, not Jesus, not the apostles, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. not the early church. No, 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 no. The Catholic Church made the change and they challenge us as, 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 as Protestants. If you follow the Bible, the Bible only, well, you should just keep the entire Ten Commandments. But they're also saying we follow tradition. <laughs> we follow tradition and they know Sunday keeping is the tradition of men. It's not the commandment of God. That's just what it is, man. You don't have to hate me for this. You can put your black balls in the comments. It's okay. You can do that. I don't mind. But what I'm not going to do to you is lie to you. I may be your enemy today, but in the future, you will look back and say, man, that crazy guy on YouTube was telling the chill. <laughs> if you can come to this conclusion, I'm happy with the result. <sighs> the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord also on the Sabbath day. Jesus in Luke 4, 16 he went to church on the Sabbath and so should you. The Sabbath is more than worship. You can worship God anytime, any place, anywhere, any day. The Sabbath is a commandment to keep holy the seventh day of the week. That means you keep all your servile work. You don't do certain labor on that day. You turn the attention to Jesus. You give him the heart, you surrender to the will, and you do service for God, and you go to church, a Sabbath-keeping church. You worship with the G, you worship with the rest of the saints. You do this for 24 hours, sunset Friday to sunset Saturday. This is how Jesus commands for this to happen. Obedience is the fruit of faith. Anyway, much more could be said. Today is Friday, Sabbath is coming. I'm excited. I'm ready to clean up my house and do the things that needs to be done. Cooking is already done. Children clothes are already, you know, prepared for Sabbath. Listen, we're not playing over here. <laughs> we're keeping it holy. We're going to spend time with the Lord, spend time with the family, spend time in the Bible. That's what's going to happen this Sabbath. So if you don't want to enjoy the beauty of the Lord, you don't want to enjoy God's seven day Sabbath. Well, that's fine. You, you don't have to, but I will, I will. And many seven-day events around the world are doing the same thing today. Thank you for listening. Share your thought and perspective with me. I want to hear from you. Until next time, have a good one. Bye.